What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, uh, where we break down the latest and greatest cybersecurity news, as well as highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who have made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and today, as always, I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up, what's up? And LeVon Maynard. What up? What's going on? So... Uh, not much has changed, same Monday through Friday. Uh, listeners will have noticed that on Wednesday, we had Ask a Sis Pete in, the, uh, in between the episodes, so we're gonna keep that going. Um, give us your feedback, let us know what you, what you, if you like the new schedule where we do two topics, Ask a Sis P, then a discussion, and then obviously we do the weekly rundown. So a little plug for the schedule for us the week, as well as seeking your feedback, just so we can continue to improve the show and you guys can continue to you know like, share, hit the bell if there's a bell involved or whatever to follow us uh, and just give us uh, your questions and uh, any comments you have. So with that being said, uh, topic one for this week will be the uh, the FBI and all that, that good stuff that Shannon's about to break down to us. <laughs> all right. So this is actually an article from ZDNet.com uh, written by Danny Palmer. Uh, the title of the article is the FBI removed hacker backdoors from vulnerable Microsoft Exchange servers not everyone likes the idea. Now, that is exactly how it sounds, right? Like the FBI went and removed these vulnerable Microsoft Exchange server uh, uh, vulnerabilities, right? Um, now, what they don't tell you is that they went in, well, what they don't tell you in the title, they tell you in the article is that they went in without the knowledge of the companies to do this, and they actually had a court order to do so, okay? So, I, I, I have said this in the past, right? Like I'm one of those, and, and I realize I'm in the minority on this, right? I'm one of those that I don't mind, you know, our government jumping in every once in a while, like, you know, catching some terrorists or doing whatever, you know, without having a court order or whatever it may be. But this one seems like it could be a bridge too far at the risk of putting myself on the on the wrong side of the FBI, right? Like FBI, don't come get me. I'm not doing anything crazy, but <laughs> but this is- this is He's where speaking for himself. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for me. I'm speaking for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, so this one, I, I realized the intention of what they did, and again, they got a court order to do it, which is, which is kind of the scarier part to me, right? So, like, I, I don't, I don't want to sit here and say, okay, the FBI went rogue, right? Because they had the legal obligation to do so because they requested it, but do do companies actually want this right so the ncsc over in the uk they went in and did the same thing but they asked the company's permission right now i think if we would have done that if the fbi would have done that here in the states i think they would have gotten a lot more co uh, cooperation than what they thought they were going to get which is probably why they did it this way in the in the in the in the middle of the night so to speak you know what i mean to go in and and fix these vulnerabilities that came out from last month i think it was or whatever um, but it's one of those things where I, I'm, I'm very leery of this, right? Because not only did the FBI go in there and remove these shells that were the, that were the vulnerabilities that came out for this, they didn't even patch anything on the way out. Right. So your good intentions that you got this court order under, you went in there and said, Hey, for, for the good of the nation, for cybersecurity, cause that's the FBI's mission, right? It's for, it's for the betterment of our nation. Um, we want to go in here and fix this and make sure these companies are not held liable. Now, I haven't seen anywhere where they said this was just companies that are tied to, you know, national defense or anything of that network or of, of that nature, right? Which I could probably understand a little bit more, right? If you had a company that that has um, a, a, a contract or something with the Department of Defense, you know what I mean, or different different, you know. Uh, uh, government organizations, I can see it being a little bit different, right? Because you're like, okay, we need to protect our resources. But when you're going into private companies, it's a little bit different, right? Um, and it just has that stink of conspiracy to it, right? You don't need to be giving anybody else any, any feeling that there's some type of conspiracy going on, that the FBI is going in here and doing whatever, right? Because you don't, because there are still to this day companies that don't even know that they went in there and did it, right? So, because again, because they didn't patch on the way out, right? So it's not like your IT team comes in and sees, oh, who patched this? And they have to ask around the office, right? Like, did you patch it? Did you patch it? Did you patch it? And that kind of gives it away, right? They didn't do anything different. They just removed the possible vulnerability that companies at, at present were not fixing anyway. 
and then left it in the same vulnerable state. You know what I mean? Like you didn't do anything to fix because Microsoft provided the fix to you, right? They got it out quick, said, hey, here it is. We're, 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 apply this right here. So I, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm a little hesitant to say that this is a good thing. You know, and again, I'm the I'm the Patriot Act guy, right? Like bring the terrorists <laughs> down. You know what I'm saying? But Ryan, what's your what's your feeling on this, man? So I, I kind of like I don't want to be a fence writer, but I like to argue both sides of this. It, <laughs> That's it's right. Super, it's super interesting to me, right? Uh, so so uh, part number one, uh, how do they know that they're there? Like who is reporting to them that their vulnerabilities are out there? Like what what monitoring uh, tools, software, what partnerships do they have? Uh, where they're being told, I assume it, it's it's through the uh, the uh, the parent of the uh, the vulnerable system. I would assume that they're reporting like, hey, these are the the organizations that are affected uh, to give them some kind of visibility. It would be my assumption. I, I don't think the FBI has a, 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 a some kind of solar winds or or uh, what's up gold or whatever uh, that that sees everybody's uh, vulnerability. So there's some partnership there. Uh, which makes me feel a little bit more at ease with it. Like uh, then obviously um, due to our more proactive stance uh, in the federal government, we're trying to make sure that we, we, we push those, those terries out of our system. Um, that was a, a, a what's called it? Um, key and pill reference with the terries. Um, so there, there seems to be some, some, some good, like that's the good part. I like, I, I like that they went in there, they saw that these, these web show, um, how do they, they describe them as uh, hundreds of unmitigated web shells have been identified or removed from hundreds of systems. Um, so you have the federal government, you have the Department of Justice, and then you have the FBI, um, all, all doing things proactively to remove these uh, abilities for bad actors to do re remote administration of, of uh, public and private uh, sector systems. My problem though, uh, would be obviously a that you have to disclose a little bit more how this monitoring stuff is working because that, that makes me nervous because uh, it, it, the assumption is it's good and it's a partnership uh, but b my other problem with it would be um, you have an access to my system like, how do they get in is the the question like I, I realize that they can't reveal that probably because then you would be letting other nation states know uh what tools we have at our disposal to get into systems. So, cause it, it doesn't just say, um, it doesn't just say, uh, what's the term we're looking for? Uh, defense systems. It, it actually does say private, it says through our private and defense uh, partnerships. But like you said, some companies didn't even know they, they came in. So like that's a, a crazy partnership if you didn't notify them on the way out, like, hey, we, uh, we touched your systems in, in some way. Um, so it makes me nervous because it because it it seems surgical, right? So like to go in there and, and to be able to get into uh, someone else's system, to be able to remove the uh, the the web shows and, and uh, other vulnerabilities, pretty slick. Uh, I don't think they can patch only because patches have to be vetted by a company, so you don't go in and break their systems. So that would make sense to me. I can't I can't patch your system. Maybe you need that Windows XP server to be running on your back end, or else you know I mean it'll disrupt your systems. But isn't that all the more reason for them to have did it like the NCSC did it and just ask for the cooperation, right? Because then everybody's working together. You can yeah. say, hey, look, we, we, we can make this work. We can, we'll go in there, remove it and fix it for you at no charge to you because the FBI went and did this for free anyway, right? They didn't charge these companies to go right. and do it. So it's a service that's provided because they're the FBI. They're not for profit, right? They don't need to make money back on doing this. Yeah. The, the manpower is paid for in tax dollars that we're going to pay regardless. You know what I'm saying? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't disagree with that at all. But so it. So they. I, th I think. I think maybe this is a proactive move because the, the companies are moving too slow to remove vulnerabilities. Like, uh, because they might not have the tools to remove without patching. Like, because the patch will be the cure. The patch will get rid of the vulnerability as well as uh, keep it from coming back. This seems very, very surgical. It's like we can we can go in and we can remove it. Uh, when it comes to patching, you're gonna do that on your own. Like we just want to make sure that the uh, the, the bad actors can't. Uh, remotely administer whatever it may be like my my guess will it wouldn't be mom and pop organizations i think that this will probably be things that have to do with people's personal uh identify ident identifiable information uh banking like things to do with uh you know infrastructure like because i i i can't believe that they have a big enough department to to canvas everybody 
So they, they probably hit the, the big hitters, uh, the, the most the most vulnerable that would make us the most vulnerable. You know what I mean? I, I, think, I think that's what they what their intent was. It just it's very that. 1984 ish. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they actually mentioned in the article it was some Fortune 500 companies in there or something like that, right? Or maybe I read it somewhere else. Right. Yeah. I, I, so it, it has its pros and its cons, but right. uh, you, if you do this in the UK, it would be uh, they, they would flip their lid. They would go crazy. They'd be like, "Why are you crossing borders, doing stuff in our systems?" So that's where that partnership with the NTSC uh, probably came from. Like, they can do what we can do, but uh, obviously they had to ask permission. But here, here in uh, uh, America, there's some some EULA or some something written, and maybe the Patriot Act or some other like the FISMA rules. Maybe I don't know, because if it had anything to do with like PCI DSS or. Um, I don't know, like whatever they call it, HIPAA now, high tech, I think is the, the bigger bigger umbrella. Like if it has to do with those, I think the government can put their hands in things to, to ensure that they're secure or they can find you and things of that nature. So maybe it's been expanded. Maybe they can actually also touch a system um, hmm. to, to a lesser extent, but yeah. I, I, I need way more information. No, for sure, <laughs> for sure, because they didn't spill out everything in this in this article here, right? I think they did it because they know that people aren't really paying attention to it, though. That's the thing, right? So maybe that's also true. Maybe yeah. in the UK, people are paying closer attention to stuff like this, but in America, nah, we don't care unless it, if they'd have put it on TikTok, yeah, we would have cared then, right? But <laughs> it wasn't on, it wasn't on TikTok right. or social media, so <laughs> right. we didn't we didn't care about it. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that may be a difference as well. And I think the FBI probably knew that going in. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, we're going to ask for this court order, be, but it's not like we're going to broadcast it on, you know, I know they don't have court TV anymore. Or, you know, you know, those shows that show like all the right. court stuff all the time. It was court TV or whatever it was, whatever the network was, used to show trials all the time. That's probably not even a thing anymore, but uh, there's no ratings in that. There's no flash and pizzazz. So you don't <laughs> anymore. But uh, yeah, the, I 100% I, I believe that they were like, we can do this, get in, get out, do it, and there'll be very minimal backlash to it. You know what I mean? Because if I'm being like, if I'm being honest, like this was the only site I saw it on. I do my fair, my fair share of review of what's going on in the world, looking at other, you know, bigger news networks, and this did not register unless I somehow missed it. I'm not saying I read every article, but I see most headlines, right? And it did not, it did not even register. No, it didn't, it didn't pop up on, on national news either, or national news, I guess, whatever, whatever silo you feed into uh, CNN or Fox or whatever, because they, um, I, I watch news on AFN, so they, they try to give you all the major net news networks, which all conflict with one another, but none of them brought this up recently. Um, maybe next week, it'll be something, but uh, I, so I, again, like, I always feel like I'm on the fence. I don't mind when this is being done to other people, like. The whole big brother thing does not bother me. We're like, oh, that's kind of cool. It's very Orwellian, you know what I mean? But if it's done to me, I got a problem with it. Um, so if I if I were the 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 CISO or the CIO of one of these corporations, I, I would take some pause. Like first, I should have probably passed the stuff um, if I could. There Again, some people can't. Um, but if I exist and you did this over my head, I'd be like, oh, wait a minute. I don't like any part of that. But but here's the thing, right? So the hope is that the CISO or, or whoever, v CISO, whatever, would have presented this option already because this is something that happened a month, month and a half ago, something like that, when all this kicked off. Like it was, it was at least in March, I want to say. I'm, I'm trying to remember the time frame, but like it was a while ago. So if you as a CISO, you should not be butthurt about this right now because you should have presented this to your to your bosses or to whomever, right? Your CIO, you know, COO, whomever however your structure is in your company, um, even if it's a little mom and pop spot, the owners, right? To say, hey, this is out there, but this is something. And, and you know what? I can't even say that because it's not like Microsoft was charging you for this fix either. You know what I mean? It, so like, I, I, there's no reason. Like if it, if it wasn't done, this is a free fix that was offered out there. Microsoft makes it available. If you have their products, you have access to this fix. For, for the price you've yeah, already yeah. paid for the product that you're using. So I, I, I don't even, right. I, I'm going to take back what I said because there's no reason for it to, <laughs> to let it go on this long. You know what I mean? It should have been done already. Yeah, unless you have a, a EOL system, like there's there's still those those end of life systems that they just can't, or they not that they can't, they can't afford to replace or they, they 
they believe the risk is worth it. Uh, again, if you're if you're if you're a bank like we talked about a couple weeks ago, and you're using one of these EOL systems, and you can compromise. It's on you. But uh, as for the the CEO or the COO or whomever is on top to to take take that risk on. Uh, so it really is like if he says, hey, if we patch this, it's going to bring us down for X amount of time. We're going to lose X amount of dollars. You might be like, nah, we're going to do that a little bit later. Uh, maybe we'll wait another month and then still be vulnerable, right? Um, but now the FBI came in, the FBI swooped in <laughs> and potentially <laughs> removed the vulnerabilities. But you still need the patches because they're just going to find their, they're, they're going to find another way to compromise you. If you don't patch it, you can remove, you can remove the threat. But if you don't patch the, uh, the vulnerability, they'll be back. So... Hopefully they put them on notice. Hopefully it's like Project Zero. Like if you don't if you don't fix this, we're gonna disclose who you are, because we we came in there and we already gave you, um, uh, I guess, an extension on on your uh, on on the threat. But I think if the I FBI know. was I think if the FBI was to do that, that would break the story because you know uh, companies would be coming out saying, hey. We feel threatened by the federal government at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, that's true. They, it, they, Google they, get away with it, but they, <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. But yeah, I, I'm, I assume more will uh, come out though. Like, we we found the one article it was very interesting, or I should say, you found the one article it was very interesting. Uh, I think in the next couple of weeks, especially um, if uh, the attackers were to come back. Uh, obviously this will become bigger news. So uh, keep our eye out on it. I'm sure it'll develop into something else over the next couple weeks, whether it be good or bad. But with that being said, I think that brings us to the Natural Inclusions episode. Uh, thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Devon. It was a really good one. Very, uh, very, or like I said, Orwellian, like, like you know, who, Big Brother is watching. He, he's in there and he's, he's, he's a superhero though, right? He's removing your... Uh, your, your vulnerabilities. Um, now it's up to you to, to patch them uh, and hopefully in the near future. So with that being said, uh, please hit us up at uh, www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. Uh, you can also get to our YouTube, our uh, various podcasting platforms, IG uh, and Twitch. You can hit me up at RyRy Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. I'm on LinkedIn Clubhouse. Uh, Twitch, and, or not Twitch, I keep saying Twitch, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. And you, LeVon? Oh, you hit me up on, on the Twitters at LeVon Maynard. There it is. Y'all be easy. Take care.